In this module, we will make it easier to play around with the movement variables we have changed before. We will create our own new variables and we will initialize them when the game begins. We will comment our code and we will make sure that they are editable so that we can change them in the level instance as well. In this module, our goal is to override the maximum walk speed and jump height with our own new variables. Let's go into the first person play character. Let's go up a bit. So we want to replace variables that are part of the character movement component. We can actually drag this out into our event graph and this will create a reference. This reference will allow us to set or get variables from the component. So if we drag off and we look for max walk speed, we can see that we get a get max walk speed or set max walk speed. We we'll want to do set max walk speed. This will now overwrite the value of this variable in the component. We want to do the same for the jumping height. So we'll look for set jump C velocity and overwrite that as well. We want that to happen after we've overwritten the max walk speed. What's happening now is that we're setting both of them to zero in this piece of logic. We're going to create our own variables. I'm going to show two ways of doing this. First way is to go to the my blueprints tab and then variables and then click the plus here on the variable. We now added a new variable. So let's call it fb underscore max walk speed. fb standing for first person. Press enter. Now if we check out the details panel, we can see that the variable type is actually a boolean. We need this to be a float. So we can click it and there float. If we want to set a default value, we need to compile first. So we need to compile our code. Let's go ahead and do that. Compile, I always like to save afterwards as well, just to make sure. And now we can set a default value. Let's put that to 500. Compile and save. In this case, there's another way to create a new variable. We're setting the jump C velocity. We can go to that node and right mouse button on the green pin here and say promote to a variable. It now created a new variable, but it also set the variable type automatically, which is nice. We'll call this fb underscore max jump height. Now we need to compile and make sure to set a default value. Let's also do 500. Drag this down a little bit, make it a bit more readable. As you can see, we're still setting our max walk speed to zero. So we need to grab our new variable and connect it. So we can drag it out here and then select get. What you can also do if you want to get a get node is hold control while dragging out the variable and it will automatically do a get instead of ask you which one you want. If you hold alt while dragging out, it will automatically do a set, but we don't need that right now. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this. We want to connect the max walk speed to the max walk speed. And there we go. We are now overriding our maximum walk speed and our jump velocity with our own new variables. But these two nodes are just hovering in the event graph. There's nothing here that's making this happen. But these two variables at the moment are never really called. They're just hovering in the event graph. We want them to happen as soon as the game starts. There's actually an event for that that you can always call in any blueprint actor. It's called begin play. So I'm going to go ahead and press right mouse button and look for begin play. And there we go. Add event, event begin play. We want to connect these two, and there we go. As soon as our game starts, we overwrite the maximum walk speed with our new variable, and we overwrite the jump C velocity with our other new variable. Now we want to comment this code in case another team member wants to look over it, or we come back later and we wanted to make some changes. Let's select everything and press C for comment. And let's call this begin play. You can add some more details do a description how you like. I'm going to say set movement variables. Now what I like to do with begin play is go into the details panel with the comment selected and go to comment color and set this to blue. Having begin play always be blue makes it really easy for me to find it. Right now if we zoom out, it won't be hard to find begin play. But I don't really like reading, I like to go by color coding. so. Right now, I would be able to immediately spot begin play without having to read, which I like. So we'll go ahead and compile and save, and we'll go back to our map. 
When we select our first person character, however, we will not have access yet to those variables that we just created. We can't change them in the level instance of our actor. So we'll go right back to the first person character. And we need to make some changes over here. If we go to the My Blueprints tab and we look at our new variables, you can see this icon behind it. And it says variable is not public and will not be editable on an instance of this blueprint. So what we need to do to change this is just click it. And this will open the eye and this means that it is now public and that we can edit it on an instance of the blueprint. Another way to do this is to click the variable that you want to make editable and then in the details panel select instance editable. Compile and save. You'll see that the eye icon has changed here as well. Go back to our first person map. And with your first person selected, in the details panel, you can now change those values. So now it's a whole lot easier for you to play, change the values, play again, change the values, play again. Something important to keep in mind is that if we do change the values, let's say we'll do 400, 400, you'll see these yellow arrows appear next to it. If we click these, it will reset back to default, which is 500. I'm going to change it to 400 again. So this means that the changes that we make are only applied to the instance that we currently have selected. What this means is if I drag in a new first person character, the values will have reset again. So values that you set on the level instance are not saved to the blueprint. You could look at those values and go back into your first person character blueprint and then change the default value to your new value. But you can also select your first person character and then in the details panel, click on edit blueprint and then select apply instance changes to blueprint. Let's go ahead and do that right now. Apply instance changes to blueprint. We updated the blueprint. And now we can see 400 and 400 are the new normal. There's no yellow arrows. And if we go into the blueprint, we can see jump heights 400, max speed is 400. The variables inside the first person player character have updated. You now know how to create a new variable that can be tweaked in a level instance.